welcome to Liberty Live. Today we want to be talking about seals and signets. What is a signet? A signet is an emblem or name or icon or picture representing someone or something of immense importance or of common worth. Uh, in our society, something that we have to understand this would be like the presidential seal that has, uh, or on the dollar bill, the Pluribus Union, and it has the eagle um, and the arrows and uh, other cultures have, uh, like Caesar, they had emblems. We have faces on coins. There's a lot of things, even in our culture, they send you those things in the mail and they're little pre-addressed uh, stickers. They have your name and your uh, information for your address and so forth. And sometimes they're beautiful with filigree and other times you can design them and so forth. These are things just to give you an example of um, something what a signet would be like back in uh, biblical times. However, in biblical times, these were more like for sealing documents. Um, think about even when Jesus went to the tomb, they sealed the tomb with a clay seal. And there's no way, once you break a clay seal, there's no way to mend it without knowing it's been tampered with. It's like security tape uh, or something, you know, even like those wet seals in our phones. If you have water damage, it changes the color and it can't be changed back. But the interesting thing is they found many of these seals and signets. Uh, a signet ring, as a matter of fact, some scriptures we'll look at, will bring great light into what this is uh, biblically because they've begun to find these all over Israel. And what would happen is they would carve a, uh, a signet or an emblem or again a name or a picture some type of iconography to represent the kingdom, the king, a royal scribe, uh, something like a notary, a royal notary. We have stamps too. I think that's probably the closest thing in our culture to a signet or uh, in intaglio is what they're called. They can also be written on cylinders. Uh, but in the Bible, there were signet and signet rings. So we're going to look at some scriptures today. And I also want to show you uh, just a quick example of what this would actually have really have looked like. So first of all, uh, I want to show you some scriptures. Then here is an example of a signet ring. Uh, and you can see the blue is a form of lapis lazul uh, or lapis lazuli, which was famous in all the kingdoms that the Lord had ever put his hand on uh, for any length of time. Uh, a beautiful, gorgeous blue stone. Uh, mined all over the world and e of immense worth and of immense beauty. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the biblical kingdoms were adorned in lapis lazuli. And we found many lapis lazuli signets and seals and signet rings all over the world from the biblical era. So this is an example of one. Uh, and I have borrowed some Play-Doh from my son. And what I'm going to do is just show you an example that when I press the signet ring in, you would press it into wax or clay, uh, then you can see the design matches the signet ring. Okay. Now, even nowadays, you can go to a craft store and uh, they have little wax, uh, little wax bars that you melt and you can stamp it with a A or a J or a K or a little filigree or whatever it is kind of keeping this tradition alive. But again, this is something that had immense worth. And I'll read some scriptures that are going to come to great light now that we're kind of getting some uh, ideas of what these signets are. And just for an example, they found Hezekiah. They found Isaiah. Uh, a, a lot of famous uh, scrolls uh, sealed and signets. Think about the one in Revelation. There's seven seals. Uh, anytime you had an old document, whether it was papyrus or calaf, which is animal skin, something like the Torah was made on, um, and it was sealed in such a manner that, uh, or even a jar of uh, olive oil, it was sealed, the rope was sealed with wax, and then the signet would go inside the wax, and it would bear a mark. Uh, it could even also bear the date. As a matter of fact, they still do that on some high-class balsamic vinegars, and some oil and wine and, and things like this. They'll stamp it with wax, a seal or a date or the brand. 
again, and this tradition goes all the way back probably to some of the earliest records of any kingdoms on the earth. But this is an example of the scroll from Revelation, seven seals, Revelation chapter 6 and on. And there's actually seven seals. The papyrus uh, is wrapped seven times in a clay seal. And you can't open the document without breaking these seals. And once you break the seals, you know it's been tampered with. But in this case, uh, only one is worthy to open this scroll. Let me show you some scriptures here. Let's go to first scripture. is going to be Song of Solomon 8, 6. It says, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as fierce as the grave. Its flashes are like flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. How about Haggai 2.23? On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring. Uh, and again, a signet ring is a ring with a signet on it. Uh, there's a few more examples made out of lapis lazuli. Uh, and as you zoom in, sometimes they're Hebrew names, name of kings, name of kingdoms, names of scribes, names of famous dignitaries. Um, and they are carved into stone or clay um, with iron styluses, uh, with copper, with flint. And then uh, since it's an imprint, it's a, they have to do it backwards. This is where the skill comes in. You have to carve it backwards. And anything that requires layers like the uh, lion or sometimes there's deer, gazelle, uh, on these signets, they have to add depth in a negative, uh, you know, a, a negative imprint into the piece of stone. For an example, here's a ram. And wherever, you know, you want the jaw or the horns or the chest to come out, you have to dig deeper into the stone so that when it imprints into the clay. Let's do this again here. When it imprints into the clay that you're seeing an image of what is actually being uh, attempted to be shown there. And what's neat is since clay dries by air or in a kiln by fire, sometimes they'd find a city that's been destroyed and they'll find little clay bulas. They're called bulas. Um, they find these that have been solidified because of the immense heat and as a matter of fact in the city of David they found some uh, two officials one of them was responsible in the book of Jeremiah two of them as a matter of fact were in the book of Jeremiah uh, for dealing with Jeremiah and they and they weren't just one name like Hilkiah they had at least bearing two names matching the biblical sequence very very important um, the authenticity and accuracy of these but again uh, these here are all on lapis lazuli. Again, beautiful blue uh, stones with negative imprints. This is one that was one of Solomon's sons. Sometimes they were on agate stone. They could be on jasper, sardox, any type of stone that could actually uh, withstand heat for wax. Uh, obviously, like any ring, it needs to be able to be uh, sturdy, pretty sturdy. Not all stone is so sturdy, but... Uh, let's read a few more verses on the matter. Jeremiah 22, 24. As I live, declares the Lord through Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, as an example, say they would find his seal. And it would either have a design. It would either say, uh, Coniah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. So there would be three names on a seal or signet. It's easy to find one name and say, yeah, maybe that has corroboration or credibility in the biblical era or not. When you're matching three names in the same Hebrew tongue and transliteration that's on the bula or the seal, the signet is the stone, the bula is the clay um, rendering of the signet. It's called a bula, B-U-L-L-A. Um, when you're matching three names, the level of uh, difficulty to find a character in the Bible that matches the place and time and the uh, in the actual duration, the chronology of the uh, story and the narrative and the history of the Bible, 
When you find this, for an example, someone that was serving in David's palace during the time of David, let's just say, for example, 1000 BC, and, uh, and it matches the names that are in the biblical corroborated uh, narrative, beloved, these are facts. They're beautiful uh, to find these uh, amazing, amazing artifacts. Genesis 41:42. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. Remember, this is Jacob who wrestled with Israel, his, his son Joseph that was uh, given the coat of many colors when he rose up to power and served Pharaoh. The first thing he did is he put the signet ring on his hand. And what this would do is if I stamp something, it's kind of like my signature. It literally is in place of a signature. Uh, if someone comes to me with a royal document and I put that stamp on there, it's gold. Uh, if something belongs to me and it has the seal, as a matter of fact, many times in archaeological, uh, archaeological studies in Israel, we find jars, vessels, uh, cups, mugs, plates, uh, you name it. And, it. and the only reason we know where it's from and who it belonged to is because there's a seal on the handle or the jar uh, and, and something like that in place of where we would put a brand name today or... Many times we'll write our name on something belonging to a lot of school uh, items or tools and some things are like this. We'll write our name at the bottom well. Uh, in their days, they would just stamp their signet. Esther 3.10, so the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to Haman the Agagite, son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews. Uh, Esther 3.12, then the king's scribes were summoned on the 13th day of the first month, and an edict according to all that Haman commanded was written by the king's stairaps and the governors over all providences and the officials of the peoples of every province under his own script and its own language, and as it was written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with the king's very own signet ring. Esther 8.2, and the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai, and Esther, and set Mordecai over the house of Haman. So um, if I'm the king, I'm going to be wearing this either full time or I give it to my dignitary and say, hey, run the place today. Anything that happens, it would be like me giving you my credit card or a budget or my stamp or my approval that whatsoever happens. Does this sound familiar that we do all things in the name of, in the authority of, in the stamp of, we are ambassadors of the kingdom? What happens when you are an ambassador of a kingdom? You have a passport and you go through and they put a stamp on it. They put a signet on it with ink. Uh, again, this is old world style. And it's so amazing, right? It's so amazing that these beautiful stones are mined from the earth. And here's the thing about a signet. It's not just written upon. It's written within. So uh, is there anything like this that we have an example of? The first crown that was given to the high priest Ha'aron, Aaron, Moses' brother, was to be designed as a signet, which means it was a reverse emboss so that the letters could pop out. And uh, this way, instead of the name being written upon, merely it's written within, meaning that the crown and the name are inseparable. This is why it says in Zechariah, the, the Lord, in that day, the Lord and his name will be one. In other words, we're not just writing the name of the Lord on everything we do. It is, with, it is in the DNA of what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Why are, you, why are you granting me love? Why are you forgiving? Why are you giving mercy? Why are you giving grace? Because the DNA of the king is in the official business of the kingdom. In all of the happenings of the kingdom, there should be a signature of the king. And this signature is of grace and mercy. Just a few more here. But you may write as you please in regard to the Jews in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring for an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. Esther 8.10, and he wrote in the name of the king Ahasuerus and sealed it with the king's signet ring, and then he sent it by letters and mounted couriers riding on swift horses that were used in the king's service. Job 38, 
Have you commanded the morning since your day is begun, or caused the dawn to know its place, that it may take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under a seal, and its features stand out like a garment. Any seal you have that stamps clay, the clay takes on the form of the seal. This is very important for a couple verses ahead. We're almost there. Daniel 6.17 And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. So when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, so that no one could tamper with it, no one could let him out, no one could say he escaped, it was sealed with the ring. The wax was sealed. And he would open the door, it would break the wax or break the clay. The bulla is shattered because it's dried. Again, the same thing happened on the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it was actually sealed so that it could not be tampered with. How about this famous story, the prodigal son? But when the father said to his servants, bring him quickly my best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Beloved, any time a father puts a ring on in the hand of his son in the old world, that is the authority of the father. It's the power to buy and sell. It's the power to make uh, authoritative decisions upon the king or the kingdom, upon the person or property. It is a very big deal to have a signet ring. Did everyone have signet rings? No, they did not. How about this, Isaiah 49, 16. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, and your walls are continually before me. The Lord engraving us on the palm of his hands. Now, we were all children once. Go back to third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and you write stuff on the palm of your hand. could be the name of an individual, a place, something you wanted to remember, a picture, your board. You just... When you're that young, that's what you do. You have a marker, pen, pencil, you start writing on your hand. Well, the Lord says, where do we get that from? We're in the image of the Lord. The Lord has written us on the palm of his hand. Not just written, inscribed, meaning that we've become one. That's why it says that the, the works of God declare his glory. Like, like day after day, we behold the works of God by the works of his hands. Why? Because we are the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. And that is actually written on his hands. In his actual hands are we written and crafted. Ephesians 1, 13. We have two more. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, sealed. Remember, a signet and a seal is one and the same. It just depends. Usually a seal is the byproduct of a signet. Again, so say I have this signet ring and I have this document and I don't want you to open it yet. I'm going to put this Play-Doh or this clay. We'll call it clay dough here. I put the ring on and I'm going to seal it like this and now you see that this is going to be sealed so that no one can open or tamper with this document once it dries other times i'll wrap the rope through it and then stamp it and that way it it, it is actually part of the clay bulla now and there's no way to separate the seal from the signet and the final verse here you shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the graving of a signet holy to the Lord. Now, since Jesus and Moses, Moses was promised we would be a kingdom of priests, a nation of priests. And in Revelation, it says that Jesus fulfilled this promise. He made us a nation of kings and priests, which means we all have in the manner of a signet, again, which denotes belonging to. And by the way, only the Father can give to the Son the authority to use His signet. Okay? Only the Father can give the Son the right to seal His signet. And we are sons of the everlasting Father, mighty God. 
We are priests of his kingdom, and his name is written on our hearts. It's written in his hands. It's written upon us, one with us. In that, in that day, the Lord and his name will be one. And it says, he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit.